Hello everyone and welcome to the Bee Heart House. My name is Alicia and this is my video podcast about basically all the crafty things that I like to do and adventures that I go on with my husband and our black Labrador around the beautiful Pacific Northwest of the United States. So welcome if you're a new viewer and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. I'm so glad you could find some time to tune in and join me today. So a few things. Uh, I'm trying to use a little bit of the natural daylight, which is coming in on this side from the window. So there are some clouds in the sky and I anticipate them moving in and out and me having great amount of daylight and then not a great amount of daylight. It is about 4.30-ish p.m. And I can see that the sun is not going to last much longer. So I need to use what the time that I have very efficiently. So uh, it's been a couple weeks since I've talked to you guys last. It's been a very eventful couple of weeks with... Um, the coronavirus hitting Washington State. So, yeah. I'm not going to talk about that too much because, wow, there is a lot of news coverage. And it might just be because I'm in the thick of it in working in King County where things to be, things seem to be progressing, um, but yeah, I just, you know, I turn on the TV and there's news report after news report, and then there's a bunch of emails at work, and there's articles to read online, and I just feel really overwhelmed by the whole thing. I don't know how you guys feel, but, um, that's how I feel, is really overwhelmed. So thank goodness for knitting and the ability to have a really nice hobby that helps me relax and give me an outlet for all my creative juices. Um, I'm, really, I'm really thankful that I have knitting in my life. And um, I hope that you are really thankful too. And I'm always looking for new ways to kind of spread that joy. Um, to teach people how to do something they didn't know how to do before, and if it's something that a person can get a lot of joy out of, like I know I do, um, I think it's really neat. So, uh, all that <laughs> is how I'm feeling right now. But anyway, it's, uh, it's, so, hello sunshine right in my eyeballs. That's okay. So I have some um, announcements to make up here at the top of the episode. So first of all, I have just released a new pattern on Ravelry, a new color work sock design that I have been working on. Yep, sorry, I'm just going with it with the sunlight. <laughs> oh, but the socks look really good in the sunlight. So, um, these are my scholarly socks pattern that I've just released today on Ravelry. So you can find these, uh, available for purchase. You can download them right now if you want to pop over there, uh, and snatch it. Uh, so let me just show you, excuse me, a little close up. So Michael helped me take pictures of my socks outside. Excuse me, because I find that um, <laughs> it's very easy. Wow, the sun is getting very aggressive now. And <coughs> lines across my face, and dogs barking. <coughs> really. Well, what? What do you have to say? Is there a delivery man outside? 
I think I need to go check this out. What is it, Marjorie? Is it a little birdie? Is it a squirrel? It's not a delivery man because he's not facing the front door. What is it? Oh, it is the delivery man. See, UPS right there. I don't think he's coming to our house, sweetheart. I think he's going to the neighbor's house. She's like, I don't care. He's in my neighborhood. This is Marjorie's window, by the way. Let me just go back up the stairs. <laughs> so we're renting a two-story, um, I guess you could call it a townhouse. It's a duplex. <laughs> but we're on the second floor right now, and the stairs have this landing, and then they go down to the rest of the house. Yep. <laughs> Uh, but this window right here has a really nice view of the front door, so Marjorie likes to sit here and look out the window and whine at delivery people, right? Yeah. She's so cute. Okay. Okay, that's so much better. Just a little bit of cloud cover on the sun, and that's that's so much better. Okay, so like I was saying, um, my scholarly socks, here we go, are available for purchase on Ravelry. So uh, it's a pair of Colorwork socks, and I'll just hold up one sock to make it a little bit easier on myself. Yeah, okay. All the distractions. <laughs> so, uh, so you need two colors, and it really helps if um, they really contrast against each other. It just makes the uh, colorwork pattern really show up very nicely. So I knit this out of um, this main color is Cloudborn Merino uh, Fingering Weight Yarn in the Shayla Heather colorway. And this beautiful, uh, vibrant purple color I used is Cascade Heritage in, um, I think it's called Plum for the colorway. Uh, but it's just this beautiful, vibrant uh, purple color. So the color work pattern uh, goes all the way down the sock. And so I have a gusset chart um, so that the color work pattern can continue throughout the entire sock and use the main color for the, the ribbing at the top, the heel flap and gusset, and the toe. So the pattern is, first of all, let me say that this pattern is 20% off for the first 30 days of release. So, excuse me, <laughs> I um, had a bit of diet soda earlier for a little pick-me-up and the carbonated beverage is doing what carbonated beverages do. So, um, it's 20% off and that discount is automatically applied. You don't need a coupon code. Everyone gets 20% off during the first 30 days. So this pattern is going for $4, and so with the 20% off discount, it is now $3.20 uh, US dollars, so that is that. So the, the sock is knit uh, from the cuff down to the toe, and the charts and everything uh, go along with that. And I have written the pattern so that it has um, 64 stitches going around the entire sock. And so um, I did list a gauge and I did um, state what size needles I use to knit the sock. But if you need to knit the sock so that it's a little bit larger or a little bit smaller, then all you need to do is adjust the gauge. So you'll keep the same number of stitches, 
uh, but you'll just adjust the gauge. So if you need a slightly smaller sock, then I would recommend going down a needle size. Uh, and if you need a slightly larger sock, you can go up a needle size. Uh, and so that way it will um, change the size of your stitches, which will essentially change your gauge. And so what that will mostly help with is uh, the circumference of the sock. Uh, and then I have written the pattern to say, uh, to repeat the charts as needed till you get the length of the sock that you need. And I have instructions on that in the pattern. I won't give it all away right here on the YouTube channel, but um, yeah. So if you need to uh, modify the size, you can just by simply changing the size needles that you use. Uh, but you'll want to keep the 64 stitches because that is what I wrote the gusset chart for. So that is that. I can't wait to see um, more scholarly socks out there as you guys um, download the pattern and start knitting these socks in all the beautiful color combinations that I know you guys will put together. So, um, so yeah, that pattern is out and available and I'm really happy. Um, I wanted to get it out to you guys a little bit sooner, but um, you know, life happens and work has been it's just been work you know it's it really has so anyway that's that with the sock pattern so let me also share with you guys um, we are going to be starting a knit along here on the podcast it's the I guess we can call it our second annual <laughs> our second annual sock knit along here on the D Hard House podcast channel. So uh, last year, around this time, we uh, put together a sock knit along. I say we, it was all me. I act like I've helped. I don't. Um, so anyway, uh, you guys knit along with me, and I'll put a picture here. Um, I'll move to the side. I'll put a picture here of the design that we followed last year. So we took two colors of yarn and we played around with striping these two colors of yarn and um, creating a pair of socks out of them. And I created uh, tutorial videos and posted them on a regular basis and you guys followed along in the videos as well as with the written pattern to knit up your socks. And then we had a prize drawing the end of the knit along uh, and whatnot. So I would like to run that knit along again this year uh, and do a new pattern. So I came up with a new pattern for us to knit this year for the D Hard House sock knit along, which I would love to do every year around springtime. So this knit along is going to start on March 20th, which is the first day of spring on the calendar uh, for us here in the United States. And I thought that was a really nice day to start the knit along with it being the first day of spring and how things light up at work. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a college professor, by the way, and uh, March 20th is the last day of final exams for the winter quarter. So I feel like that's a really nice time to be starting a knit along. So <laughs> let me show you um, the pattern that we're going to be following. So it's going to be another two color sock. And this time I thought instead of striping, we would do a little bit of color work. So this time I thought I would incorporate a uh, more colorful yarn than just doing black and gray. But uh, yeah, so I have, um, we're gonna take two colors. You have your main color and then your uh, coordinating color. And what we're gonna do is uh, this color work pattern to sort of transition in um, from this color to the main color. I'm not describing this very well. I'm not choosing my words very well. Uh, 
so be it. I'm losing some light. I can't retake this. <laughs> so um, this pattern I'm going to be calling uh, waxing and waning. So like the moon with its phases, it waxes and wanes uh, throughout uh, its cycle. And we see this with our, with our seasons, uh, waxing and waning, moving in and moving out. Uh, and things like that. So I thought it'd be neat to have this um, springtime transition theme going on uh, and to create a pattern that uh, reflected that behavior that we see a lot um, throughout throughout the year and over and over again and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, this is um, a pattern that I wanted to be able to create so that you could use two solid colors if you like. Uh, a variegated color and a solid color. Uh, you could do a self-striping yarn and a solid color. Um, it's really up to you to play around with what two colors you would like to pair together. So I chose a uh, variegated yarn to go with a solid color. Excuse me. And I chose a solid color uh, that does not appear in the variegated. So I chose this really nice light gray. This light gray does not show up anywhere in this variegated colorway. There's a really nice light blue in this colorway, but not quite a gray. So I wanted to be able to see that contrast uh, throughout the sock. So that means when you're picking out your yarn, uh, you definitely want a main color that's going to be most of the sock. And then your um, coordinating or contrasting color can be, you know, a left all of, leftover ball of yarn. That's what I used. Um, these were leftovers from, uh, I think, who was this leftover from? I don't know. I was going to say my Five Shades of Grey sweater, but now I don't know that it was used in that. Anyway, the gray is leftover. Uh, I keep hitting my face with the sock blocker. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, that's another nice thing about these patterns is that you don't need two full skeins of yarn. Um, so I will get details up about um, how much yardage I've used so far to give you guys an idea. Uh, and the pattern is going to be a bit modifiable so that uh, if you would like to repeat this type of color work on the foot of the socks so that it waxes and wanes, during the sock. So you could have um, the gray cuff transitioning to the main color, let's say with my colors, and then the main color transitioning back out to the gray and having a gray toe. Uh, I'm going to make sure to write the pattern so that you can do that modification if you would like to. Um, yeah, so that's the idea. So I've knit up one of the socks so that I can um, take pictures and give you guys estimates on yardage and uh, show you what the finished product should look like. And the second sock I will be knitting to create the tutorial videos that will go along with our sock knit along. So this is a great knit along to join in if you are um, a beginner sock knitter or a beginner knitter in general. Uh, the tutorials will definitely be aimed at an audience of beginner, so if you're not extremely confident in your sock knitting ability, uh, this would be a great one for you to join in on. Uh, I will be giving uh, tutorials about how to cast on, how to work the heel, how to kitchener stitch closed the toe, how to read color work chart patterns, uh, which we didn't have in the knit along last year. Um, so this will be very geared towards uh, beginner knitters. If you're a more experienced knitter, uh, then these videos should just be added content for you, uh, extra resources that um, you can fall back on if there's something that you forgot. Uh, and I will also have the written pattern to go along with this. So uh, you don't have to watch the videos, but they're there to support the knit along and to guide you through the process should you have any questions um, and also to make it feel like we're a bit more connected so that 
we're actually knitting this along together. That is the whole idea is that I'm not creating a pattern and then putting it out there for you guys to knit. We're really knitting it together. Uh, and I find that really cool. So <laughs> today is March 2nd. So this is not going to start until March 20th. But uh, this way, if I tell you about it now, you have time to uh, decide about what yarn to use um, so that you can plan ahead and participate if you are a person who likes to plan ahead, like me. <laughs> okay, so that knit along will be hosted in two places. That will be on Ravelry in the D Hard House podcast group. So you do need to be a member of the group. Totally free to join. You just click a button that says join this group. Uh, and then I'm also hosting this knit along on Instagram, in which case I ask that you use the hashtag DHSockCal2020, which will be on the screen right here. <laughs> so there will be two prizes. One will be given away on Ravelry and the other one will be given away on Instagram. So let me grab those prizes really quick so I can show them to you. Okay, so the prize packages so far consist of these lovelies. So um, what uh, two, two lucky winners, one on the Ravelry group and one from Instagram, uh, will win a crochet stuffy made by me. So one person will win this cute Arctic box and the other one will get this cute bear uh, and they each come with their own scarf mm -hmm. uh, so they have um, yarn eyes and noses that are sewn in so if you are thinking about um, giving these to a young one there's nothing on here they can choke on and the scarf is removable if you want to take that off um, but I think they're just so adorable in their scarves. So one person will win the Arctic box, the other one will win this adorable bear, and with your little stuffy, you will also get a Notions pouch. So I have one here with these cute gold uh, ladybugs. So while the Arctic fox is very wintry, this is a spring knit along. So I have a Notions pouch with some spring-inspired fabric. So we have these little gold ladybugs on here. And the Notions pouch is clear with this clear vinyl on the bottom. I use these Notion pouches all the time. This is one of mine, the Art House Creations. Um, I love that I can see all the little bits in here when I put them in. And then the other one, which goes with the bear, will have this nice uh, peach colored, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's almost like a plaid pattern, uh, but it makes me think of uh, having a picnic and putting down a blanket and having a picnic. So also with the zipper and the clear vinyl. Uh, and what I will be doing is, putting in these Notions pouches some little Notions and goodies. So there will be um, like tape measures, stitch markers, um, maybe some candy, tea, something like that. Uh, so basically I will be filling these Notions pouches full of little goodies. So you'll get a stuffy, a uh, Notions pouch, uh, and it will be filled with little tidbits and goodies and then the other person will get the bear to go with the peach colored uh, one so this will be the prizes uh, if you are a maker and you would like to donate to the podcast and the prize pool please send me a message on Ravelry again my uh, information is down below in the description box I would love to support uh, other makers as well and promote the lovely products and things that we all make. So if you would like to donate, just reach out to me. That would be amazing. So this is what I have for prizes. So, wow. 
so many minutes into this already. How on earth am I going to have short episodes? Do this more frequently? That's the answer. Okay. So that um, wraps up the announcement section. Thank goodness. So let me share with you um, some things that I have been working on. I have um, one finished object to share with you, and it's not my weekender sweater. I know. The only reason it's not my weekender sweater is because I literally haven't worked on it since I showed it to you last, which is awful because all I need to do is put on the sleeves, but I don't know. I just really wanted to finish this pair of socks, so that's what I did. I finished this pair of socks right here with this beautiful pooling yarn from Red Heart. This is Red Heart Heart and Soul in the Lake House colorway, and the yarn I thought was going to be self-striping. It is not, as you can see. It's a pooling yarn. But uh, this was the first sock. And this was the second. And as you can see, they don't look identical. You can tell that the, they're the same yarn, but um, the pooling is very different on the second one. And seeing it on the sock blocker, I can tell... Can you tell? My, this sock is so much looser than the first one. So it's definitely my gauge. Um, my gauge was different, which makes sense. Um, I mean, you can tell that they go together. It's just not as... Oh, so I'm going to see more of the pooling over here. Anyway. So this uh, little progress keeper here, this little turtle, this is where I was last time I showed this to you. So I knit these cuff down, and uh, so I wasn't to the heel quite yet, so I finished off uh, the rest of this sock. And I did finish this in the month of February. I didn't post it during the month of February into the knit along, but I'm trying to participate in. So second month in a row that I've actually finished socks and not posted them, which is sad. Just sad. But anyway, I finished them. Uh, so they are a pair of gift socks. The idea was uh, for the gift knit socks cow is to knit a pair of socks uh, every month so that um, you have gifts ready for the holidays instead of trying to do it all at once at the end of the year. So these will go into my pile uh, for Christmas gifts. Uh, but yeah, I just didn't post them, so I won't be eligible for prizes, which is a bummer, but whatever. So the pattern I used uh, is Hermione's Everyday Sock, which is a free pattern available on Ravelry. Um, if you look at the show notes for this episode over in the D Hard House podcast group, I will make sure to link that pattern so it's easy for you guys to find if you don't already have it. Like I said, it's free and it's a just a really basic texture stitch. Just adds a little bit of interest. Um, and even though I added that little bit of interest, I still found this second sock extremely boring to knit. Um, but yeah, I finished it. It's done. Thank goodness. I really wanted to finish those. So now that those are off the needles, um, I have been working on um, my next design. So <laughs> all the designs, right? So scholarly socks went out today. Uh, waxing and waning is what we're going to work on for the knit along. And this other pair is almost finished. Uh, and this is another pair of colorwork socks that I'm working on for my husband, um, and I'm designing them. So the first sock is finished. In fact, it's hanging on the sock blocker right there on the wall. I won't get it down. I've shown it to you guys before. Uh, and the second sock is nearing completion. Thank goodness. So it's another two-color um, top-down 
sock with this really great um, diamond pattern. And I want to call everything plaid, and that is that is not correct. <laughs> but that's my first instinct, is to call it plaid. It's a, it's a diamond pattern. Um, so I have about uh, one more repeat to do on the foot, and then I'll be able to work on the toe, and then be finished with this. So I'm trying to power through, because... Uh, my husband really needs some more socks to wear. We all need more socks to wear. So, um, yeah, I'm making some progress on this. And, yeah, the yarn that I'm using is Premier, Premier Yarns Serenity Sock in black and green. And it's a... Uh, acrylic wool blend that I bought at a big big box craft store don't know if you've heard of it called Joanne's fabric uh, and it was oddly enough in the actually this yarn I got on Black Friday two years ago and it was dirt cheap it was like two dollars a ball yeah, it was like $1.99 plus sales tax um, per 50 gram ball. And I bought as much as what they had out on the shelf. <laughs> so um, definitely got on a lot of mileage out of that. So that pattern is in progress. And I've almost narrowed down the name of this pattern. So there's one last thing I have to share with you. But before I do that, I, let me tell you what I'm wearing. I forget to do this at the beginning, and I need to. So I'm wearing a sweater that I knit the end of last year. Yeah, I finished it before we left for Christmas to visit family. Um, So I knit this pattern. This is uh, Radiate by Hohi Locatelli. And again, I'll have that linked in the show notes on Ravelry. Uh, and it's a DK weight pattern. And the idea is to feature some bright pop of color. So it's a um, circular yoke with this bright pop of color. And then I have this um, very neutral light gray for the body and it's just been the most comfortable sweater and I get the most lovely compliments when I wear it to work so uh, so yes I wore this today it was a little bit of a chilly day today and appropriate for a sweater and I just love it and I knit this out of actually this is 100% acrylic yarn that I got from Hobby Lobby it's baby bee yarn and um yeah it's i mean it's maybe pulling a little bit um but all in all it's holding up just fine and i can machine wash it and dry it and it's something i don't have to worry about so yeah um so the last thing i have to share with you is the blanket that I'm working on, oh my gosh, I've reached a milestone and I have to share this with you. So, my buffalo check blanket <laughs> is finally going to make another appearance on the podcast because I have reached 16 squares by 16 squares, which is huge, huge. Let me show you. Okay, we're not even fully on the screen here. It's just this ginormous blanket that's awesome and laying on the floor and everything. So, <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, that looks so cool. So, uh, I have made, it's a mitered square blanket. And uh, so this is made out of uh, worsted weight acrylic yarn. The white is Red Heart in white. The light gray is Karen, C-A-R-O-N, in the soft gray mix, I believe it's called. And this dark gray is Red Heart in charcoal. What I did is use them to create this uh, buffalo check pattern. So the mitered squares, um, so I used a size 7 knitting needle. I believe it's a size, US size 7. And I put 13 stitches by 13 stitches, and I have an extra stitch uh, for the middle, for the center. Um, and I believe I have details about this on my project page. Anyway. So I've set up the mitered squares so that you can see this V-shape being made here with those mitered edges. And if I just pull this up here, you can see in the middle, there we go, they form an X. And so all the mitered edges radiate out from the center which adds this extra really cool detail to the blanket. So in order to achieve this, what I had to do is knit this blanket from the middle outward. So <laughs> I have reached 16 squares by 16 squares. So if you multiply 16 by 16, you get a huge number. Boom, I'll put it on the screen. That's how many squares I've knit. What? Look at this thing. Okay, so this thing's almost finished. And you might be thinking, well, the thing's big enough, isn't it? Why don't you just call it done? And you know, I really would, but I'm a completionist, and I know that about myself, <laughs> which makes finishing really big knitting and crochet projects difficult but anyway so what I'm gonna do is I have this big square right now and what I'm going to do is put I think what I want to do is put two more rows on just opposite sides to make it into a rectangle instead of a square uh, so I'll leave uh, the width to be 16 squares and then I'll add two more here and two more here so that it will be 20 squares this way. So 16 and 16 is 32, 16, 16, 32. So 64 more squares is what I want to add to this and then be finished. Actually I thought about putting a crochet border around it to really finish it off. That way, <laughs> I don't have the option of adding more squares because it will have a very finished border around it. So, excuse me, that is my thought. So, it's almost there. I've knit 200 something squares and I only have 64 more to go which is awesome. And I think I put on, I think I put on 20 squares just last weekend. Not this most recent weekend, but the last one. I think I put on 20 squares in that one weekend alone. So I can totally do it. But this has been another reason why I haven't worked on my weekender sweater is because um, I wanted to, I really want to get this blanket done. <laughs> and Mike and I were sitting down to watch TV and I was like, I don't know what I want to work on because I had finished these socks and we were going to sit down and watch a movie so I didn't want to have to be following a color work chart 
And so I was like, what am I going to work on? Everything's a, like all the socks that I'm working on are all color work. And he's like, well, why don't you work on this blanket? So I did. So I covered up in this blanket and knit on it. And it was really good movie knitting. And I have forgotten that blanket knitting is really good movie knitting. So anyway, so that's my progress. That's what I have. I'm really excited. This is a great blanket. We have been using it, by the way. This has not just been sitting um, around the craft room. It has been on the couch. It's been in the wash at least two times. Um, so we've been using it um, while I'm still working on it, uh, which is really good because I've also been able to tell, like, it's not quite long enough to cover me from head to toe. So if it's not long enough to cover me, it's definitely not long, long enough to cover Michael. So it does need, I think, those four more squares. Two on one side, two on the other. So I think that'll do it. And if not, I will, I will add more. <laughs> uh, it's not like it's going anywhere. So that's that. Okay, so is there anything else I need to tell you guys? Um, yeah, we're in the last couple weeks of the quarter at um, school slash work. Um, I'm a, a college professor. So uh, it's crunch time of getting ready for finals. Um, you know, everyone's preparing finishing up writing exams, students are gearing up to take their last set of exams, uh, and so it's definitely um, one of those times in the school year where things get very busy with, with questions and preparation, so uh, Mike and I haven't really gone on any adventures, the weather hasn't been cooperating, and we've been too busy uh, getting ready for the end of the quarter, so uh, I don't have any adventures to report on right now. But uh, with spring break coming up, hopefully we will have something to share with you next time. So. so until I see you guys next time, I hope that your crafting keeps you happy and sane in this crazy, hectic world that we live in. So I hope you enjoy, and I will see you next time. <laughs>